Good afternoon. I'm from the A few technical points before we go in. All attendees are initiated. We will take comments and questions throughout the webinar. To pose a question, raise your hand icon and you will be announced and unmuted. You may also send questions to be addressed by the questions being on the control panel. All questions are logged and the answer questions will be addressed by the data centers by ID. If you become disconnected, please call 518-722-211. For your information, today's webinar is recorded and is available for viewing on the CE Technical Assistance Center website and icecenter.org. 72 hours. If you have questions, questions regarding our webinars, please contact the Technical Assistance Center at ceacbsnet.org. Thank you, Gretchen. Um, your voice was a little bit choppy, so uh, let me know if uh, we have any audio problems our, on our end with Corey and my and myself. So uh, uh, interrupt us as we go along if we lose any of the quality of the video. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome uh, those of you that are online this afternoon to the uh, next in our series, our fourth webinar and the third element of uh, rewards for creativity and innovation. I'm joined this afternoon with a teacher, uh, Corey Wright, from the Eastern Monroe uh, Career Center. And I'll be introducing Corey a little bit later on and have him share some of the practices that he's been able to uh, introduce into his instruction related to this important topic of creativity and, and innovation. We're presenting this webinar in, uh, in the winter, and uh, it seems like one of the coldest days in the year that uh, those of us in New York and the Northeast are experiencing a good old uh, winter storm, and as I was preparing for today, it really reminded me of uh, uh, an old set of slides that I had. It was a little bit of a joke talking about how hardy upstate New Yorkers are, and so those of you that are uh, online from upstate New York uh, may very well appreciate this. You know, cold is a relative thing, and uh, people in different parts of the country uh, experience uh, different temperatures differently. When it's 65, Floridians turn on their heat, and people in upstate New York are planting gardens. When it gets down to 60, Californians shiver, shiver uncontrollably. People in upstate New York are still sunbathing. Uh, when the temperature gets to 50, uh, English and uh, Italian cars won't start. The people in upstate New York uh, drive with their windows down. When the temperature gets to 40 above zero, uh, Georgians don their coats, thermal underwear, gloves, and hats. Uh, but people in New York throw on a flannel shirt. When the temperature gets to 35, uh, New York City landlords finally turn up the heat, and people in upstate New York have one last cookout before it gets cold. 20 uh, degrees, people in Miami all die, and upstaters close the windows for the winter. Uh, when it gets even colder, when it gets to zero, Californians fly away to Mexico. People in upstate New York uh, get out their winter coats. 10 below zero, Hollywood disintegrates. Girl Scouts in New York State are selling cookies door to door. 20 below zero, Washington, D.C. runs out of hot air. People in upstate New York let their dogs sleep indoors. It gets even colder when it's 30 below, Santa Claus abandons the North Pole. Upstate New Yorkers get upset because they can't start their snowmobile. 40 below, all atomic motion stops. People in upstate New York start saying, cold enough for you? And then finally, when it gets to 50 below, hell freezes over. Upstate New York public schools will open two hours late. So those of you that are upstate New York educators can really appreciate that and how we seem to uh, work our way through this uh, cold uh, uh, winter season. Thank you again for uh, joining us this afternoon. Uh, this is part of a series where we're talking about the career instructional model that we've developed at the Technical Assistance Center and introducing the teacher reflection surveys to get them to think about these six important elements of instruction. With our focus on career readiness, this instructional model really helps teachers to think about the strong parts of their instruction that prepare students for the future, uh, positive careers, and college readiness as well, as a lot of these traits apply just to overall life success. 
Those of you that are familiar with the rigor relevance framework in quadrant D that defines high rigor, high relevant learning, uh, recognize that these instructional strategies around these six elements help you get to quadrant D. This reflects what we know about brain. Welcome to GoToWebinar, webinars made easy. And it can be data driven. At the end of the webinar, I'll talk again about the surveys that we have online to quantify your instruction around uh, each of these uh, six elements. There's a one-page handout um, on the um, um, uh, elements that you may find useful. For those of you that haven't obtained those that haven't been in one of the previous webinars, uh, here's a URL that you can copy down. You can download uh, this one-page uh, handout conveniently. But a lot of information uh, is on the Technical Assistance website web page related to the career instructional model that you can learn uh, a lot more about it. Uh, and as Gretchen said, all of these webinars will be recorded there uh, and you can go back to them for your reference. We have started a Twitter feed um, under the, the handle of career model and so we'll be continuing to pump out resources for those of you that are interested as we come across those that directly relate to the uh, career model. So for those of you that are Twitter users, uh, you can follow career underscore model and we'll include you in that community to share some of those ideas and we'll encourage you to share some of the things that you come across or some practices that you find uh, useful. As we've done in the other webinars, I'm going to start with a little bit of review of the element um, and why we included this as a little background. Um, and then we'll get into having uh, Corey share some of the practices that he's used in adding creativity to his instruction and why he feels it's so important. And then we'll get into some questions and some discussion. We want this to be informal. Uh, we'd like you to pose questions. Uh, you can uh, click the icon to raise your hand and pose that. Um, and uh, Gretchen will turn you on to do that at, at, at times throughout the webinar. Or you can just type in your question uh, in the question box or the chat uh, dialog box and uh, Gretchen will introduce that to us so that we can uh, uh, directly answer your question. One of the people that uh, really inspired me uh, in listening to him talk about the importance of creativity and innovation was Ken Robinson, uh, Sir Ken Robinson, and written several books and really makes some very eloquent arguments about why this is such a fundamental purpose uh, of education and uh, really causes us to think to the degree to which we're including uh, creativity in what we do uh, as uh, teachers. This is One of the, uh, there were the pre-activity that I wanted to do was to have you watch this overview video from, from Ken Robinson. It's a nice, thoughtful, short piece. Um, and uh, I'd encourage you, uh, those of you that may be um, embarking on some discussions with your colleagues in your school, may find that a very useful uh, uh, video to uh, start a conversation and see whether you agree with some of Ken Robinson's uh, comments. So um, I'd like to, uh, I'd encourage some of you to, to uh, uh, link and ask that. And what I'd like to do now is just a quick poll question for those that are online, whether you were uh, able to uh, take a look uh, at that uh, uh, video. So we've got a poll question up for you to click yes or no, whether you watch the video. Good. Most of you uh, had a chance to watch that video um, and uh, it really provides a good background of the rationale for the importance of, of creativity. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Robinson's work, uh, he now has three books out, a very prolific writer as well as an excellent speaker. His first book was The Element um, and then wrote uh, Out of Our Minds, which is kind of a, a personal set of practices related to creativity. Um, and then Finding Your Element um, goes a little bit deeper uh, into some of those personal suggestions. Uh, but as you read that, it really can cause you to think about instruction as, as I did as I spent some time reading those. One of the other resources that I'd, I'd recommend to you, um, I'll talk about some general resources at the end. We have a lot of those online. But one that I found recently that uh, I'll mention to you that I thought is very useful, they have a, a periodic email newsletter. 
um, and just a wealth of resources on their website is the National Creativity Network. Uh, put a link up here for you to uh, take a look at that. So uh, one of the resources that I'd uh, particularly recommend for those of you who want to find some ways that you can bring more creativity in your work, get your students thinking about creativity, um, that's a, a, an excellent resource that you might want to consider. Well, here are the five um, actions that we talk about um, as we think about instructional practice. If you want to try and uh, reward creativity and innovation in the classroom, what do you need to do? The first of those is about encouraging originality in student work. So much of the student work that we do is about leading students to a particular product that we, or a problem that we want them to solve, and we're looking for a standard to answer. And the more originality we can bring by opening or having students answer open-ended questions, we're really getting them to think more deeply about problems rather than trying to guess what the correct answer is. The second one is to make sure that we link creative student work to learning. It's not about just doing these extra creative activities the students may find very engaging. It still is about learning the standards that we expect. So one of the planning exercises uh, that's a responsibility of all teachers is to make sure you've made a connection between the creative tasks that you want students to do and what's really important to learn. Another area that supports this is to try and work in a way with students that they begin to discover and develop their talents. One of the advantages of offering some originality in student work is students may bring some talents uh, in the arts or a social aspect or leadership that may enhance their ability to do that particular task and they begin to discover more about themselves and then connecting that to their future career uh, goals and plans. So providing a diversity of activities helps to develop those uh, talents uh, in, from a student perspective. One of the things philosophy that you're really trying to do is to encourage students to, to uh, take some risks in, in the learning. And uh, oftentimes, as you, I've uh, listened to teachers that have tried to introduce some original student work, and some of the students that have been so conditioned to getting good grades um, get very fearful. Um, they want to get the right answer, get their A, and then move on and feel good about that they've accomplished something. And so you really need to encourage students to take some risks. And they're not always going to be successful in those initial attempts. So as a teacher in supporting them, that, that risk-taking is key. And then number five goes along with that, is to provide some good and positive feedback and support. Because students aren't going to be successful on everything that they try when they try something creative. Um, and it's important for uh, the teacher role to provide that positive feedback. So those are our five uh, actions uh, that define this area of rewarding creativity and innovation. I've got a couple poll questions that I want you to respond to. Uh, to think about these particular um, uh, five actions. So my first question is, which of these uh, five actions do you think would be most important in helping students be career ready? If we can really emphasize that well within our instruction, instruction which one do you think would really have a positive impact on student achievement? So the five are up there now. If you click the one that you think is really important for students, Submit your response. Okay, Gretchen's got the uh, um, answers up there. Corey, I don't think you can you can see them, so I'll uh, um, read those off. Far and away, num the highest ranked one was to inspire students to discover um, and develop their talents. Really pleased to see that. I guess I would agree with that one as, as I rank those. And uh, um, zero response on the providing feedback and support for creativity. Uh, it's really the, the one on inspiring students to uh, discover their talents that uh, uh, will have the greatest impact. And the other three were all pretty equal uh, with some lower responses. Let's go to another poll question, taking the same five items. Now, which of these do you think uh, 
is the greatest challenge for teachers to try and accomplish. Some of these might come easier than others. If teachers are trying to strengthen this area, which of these do you think they uh, have the greatest effort to focus on to make sure they're doing uh, and supporting their students well? So if you would submit your responses. Okay, a little more diversity in the uh, uh, answers here. Um, none of them were far and away the highest ranked. Encouraging risk-taking in students was the biggest challenge for teachers. A third of you thought uh, that was uh, the biggest challenge. The next two were to link uh, creative student work to learning and inspiring students to discover their, and develop their talents. And then the two lowest were encouraging originality um, and providing feedback and support for uh, creativity. Thank you for uh, responding uh, on those uh, to get a little bit of sense of the audience as to uh, around these five particular actions. Uh, let me introduce now and welcome the person that you can see on the screen, Corey Wright. Uh, is a business teacher uh, at Eastern Monroe uh, Career Center in, in Rochester, New York. And uh, uh, Corey is also a consultant uh, with the Creative Leadership America and some of the work that he's done to share some of these practices that uh, he's developed over the last several years related to uh, creativity in the classroom. So I had the opportunity to meet Corey uh, uh, last year, and uh, uh, we had some great conversations uh, about what he's been able to do and to incorporate creativity, and thought that it would be a great addition to share some of those observations uh, with you as a part of this webinar. So Corey, welcome, and uh, thank you for uh, sitting in with us. I know that you've had a uh, a busy day today as well, and uh, appreciate you taking time after school to share some of your thoughts on, on creativity. Thank you for Thank inviting you. me. Um, perhaps a, a way to start is to um, share a little bit about how did you begin to develop this focus on creativity, and why did you think it was so important to uh, include within your instruction? Well, I, uh, looking I at your five, five elements, elements, I think they're, they're, they're great they're elements really that fit right in. Right. Uh, my, story, my story, I was actually uh, in sales and marketing, working for a small engineering firm in Utah, and this is back in the mid-90s, and our primary product was a variable frequency drive that we marketed to industries, manufacturers. And if you recall back to the 90s, outsourcing may have been at its peak, and we were finding our customer base disappearing, and we were, we were challenged to keep this company afloat. I picked, I picked up a couple up books on books creativity, creativity to try to, try to uh, come up with some new options, options and help transform this organization. this organization. And while and doing, doing that, that, I started, started to recognize, recognize how valuable this creativity can be in all phases, phases especially when there's great change going on. on. And now, now I guess it's, I guess almost, it's almost been uh, 15, 15 years, years I've been deeply immersed in trying to understand creativity for the individual, for teams, and for organizations. One of the uh, aha experiences that you had was sharing the, the story of uh, uh, your daughter's uh, activities. Would you, would you share that with us? Sure. Is the slide up? I don't see it. There you go. Hold on. My screen went to sleep. So, so uh, this, uh, is this is just a nice, a small, nice small illustration of the impact of creativity and applying and some simple strategies. strategies. And, and I have, I have a, a seven and nine year old home, and this is a couple years, years ago working, working with my daughter. daughter. She, she was just was in the kitchen, kitchen doing a, a, a drawing, drawing, the upper right hand right corner, corner you'll see, or left hand corner you'll see a picture of the deer. And you'll see on the top corner of that page kind of a rip in the paper. So she's, so she's sitting there sitting doing this nice piece of work, work and, all and, all and all of a sudden she rips the paper, the paper she gets very, very frustrated. frustrated. Kind of, kind of and, I, and, I, and we had been working, working on some strategies, strategies to uh, think, creatively, think creatively, especially when you're challenged. challenged. And, and I, 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 I stopped her and said, hold on a second, Grace. 
pause, let's take a look at this. We unwrap the crumpled piece of paper, and we started asking this question, what might be good about it? And so often with creativity, we think about the generation side, but here we are using our judgment on the valuation side. What might be good about this crumpled piece of paper with a rip in it? So she's pondering it, and she thinks, well, I could cut out the rip, and I can turn it into a mountain. I said, great, go with it. So you'll, so you'll see in the lower, the lower corner, corner, she cut out the cut mountain, out the mountain. And, then and then she decided to put this black paper black behind, behind it with the snowflakes. snowflakes. And lo and, and behold, behold, she ended, she ended up with a piece of work that was greater, was greater than she would have ever intended. intended. And it was a, it great, was a great illustration, illustration of, of uh, using a strategy, strategy to slow herself slow down, down and, and, and look, look what might the potential be, and she got a better result. I think that's just a great example. You know, we don't always get a chance to take advantage of some of those emotional moments with our kids or our students. But um, I, I like this notion of, of, of slowing down and, and uh, saying what's good about it rather than just saying, oh, I didn't get the right answer or this is terrible. Uh, and I think we condition uh, both our children and our students uh, too much to that. You know, along those lines, the, uh, yeah, a gentleman from Kodak, from Kodak years ago, was working on a, a, a substance and put together chemicals, and it became really sticky, and he got frustrated, and he put it away. But then, uh, a couple years after that event, he needed some glue to adhere a scope to a camera, and he remembered this chemical that he uh, came across when he, when he put them together, it became really sticky. So he pulled it out, and he used it for this uh, mounting the scope, and what he had discovered was super glue, and he ended up patenting super glue. So sometimes, so sometimes what might what be might good, be good with, the with the option or the mistake isn't always, isn't always directly related, related to your end goal. goal. It could be a could tangent, be tangent goal. goal. But if we don't if we stop, stop to ask that, that question, question, we miss a lot of, of opportunities. Corey and Dick, oh. this is Gretchen. Um, we're getting a lot of complaints about an echo. Uh, Corey, if you could, um, since you're on headphones, if you could turn the speakers down on your computer. I'm going to turn it right off. Does that yeah. help? Try that. Is there still an echo? Yes. <laughs> can you guys hear me? I can. I can hear you fine. I wasn't getting the echo. Um, can you hear me? Can hear yes. you fine. Yes. Uh, you want to poll the audience? Uh, see if we fixed the problem. If I turn it down all the way, then I don't think you could hear me. All right. Well, it seems to the audience that I have an echo, too. I'm not hearing it on my end. So I'm going to try and play with the audio here if you guys can continue. But I'll, I'll try and fix it on my end. Yes, I do hear your echo as well. Yes. Strange, I'm not getting mine. So, all right, let's try and go ahead, uh, Corey. I'll, I'll try to slow it down to deal with the echo. The um, did you want to move forward to the different slide? Yeah, and and in the audience, if if you want to give us some more feedback, if it still is uh, something we need to try and improve, uh, let us know. Uh, Corey, the next thing you were going to give us a little uh, background of, of how kind of the framework as to how you've tried to incorporate um, uh, creativity into your instruction. One of the One things, of the things, things I've, come I've come across in my research, research was a was formula, formula put together by a mathematician, mathematician turned creativity researcher, and I found it very helpful to kind of be uh, reflect on it as I create initiatives that inspire creativity. And she says she that says creativity, creativity is a function, is a function of your attitude, attitude times time, knowledge, knowledge, imagination, and evaluation, and evaluation, as you can see at the top, top of the screen there. there. And, and I think, I think it, really it really pulls together, together the four, the four core, core components, components of creativity. Of creativity. You know, the yeah, knowledge, knowledge, you need something you need to create something with. with. We always, we talk, always talk, about talk about imagination when we talk about creativity. But we also, we also need evaluation, and we need to do it in a way that doesn't stomp out the novelty aspect. And of, course, and, of course, everything, everything is, influenced is influenced by our, by our attitude. attitude. 
and I have and kind I of transformed it into a visual, visual form, form and, uh, and suggest uh, people utilizing, utilizing it as a reflective, reflective tool as they, they, they kind of they create initiatives for themselves. themselves. Yeah, I think that's, uh, we often just think about creativity as just coming up with new ideas, but it, it really is connecting um, um, prior information and things that uh, hadn't been connected before. So knowledge uh, is so important, and, and the higher level thinking skills that goes along uh, with that and evaluating some of those ideas. You know, looking at one of your elements there, link creativity, work to learning. And at that sense, creativity is learning. And another definition of creativity that I really enjoy is it's the process of making new and useful connections. And that definition is learning. If you're making new and useful connections, that's, that's learning taking place. There's also, There's also this, this fundamental, fundamental underlying, underlying creative, creative heartbeat, heartbeat that, that takes, takes place. place. And to kind and of boil it down into simplistic form, form, there's this, this phase, phase of expanding, expanding our thinking, our thinking and, options, and options, and then and focusing, focusing in, in on, on the, the new and useful options. options. And, uh, and uh, when we bring, bring this to light and be more direct about this and bring it into the classroom and ask students to be original in their thinking, if we don't if we set don't this set type this of type framework, framework up, up, sometimes, sometimes they're, they're not willing, willing to take the risk that I'm going to get laughed at. at. But when you but start when to you set the tone, tone right now, right we're going to expand our thinking. thinking. Sometimes, sometimes it's referred to as divergent thinking. thinking. Then you can then start, you can to, start get to get the originality out there, and there's more safety to be thinking original. And then there's some deliberate things on how we focus down. There's a lot of conversation around critical thinking. But when but we're when focusing in for creativity, in for creativity we, can't we can't just put, put on the on criteria, criteria because, because we may we crush all the novelty and the concepts. concepts. So we need, so we need a more progressive, progressive evaluation when we're, when looking, we're looking to come, to come up with creative, creative options, options for ourselves. Well, and I think, and so you, you really focus on some um, um, facilitation strategies with the students when you're trying to. Um, be more divergent versus more convergent uh, in the uh, thinking that you want them to generate. Yes, and yes, you can build a build class, a class culture, culture where I, on I, my, my classroom, classroom I have, I have the, the divergent, divergent thinking, thinking guidelines, guidelines up on the wall, wall and the convergent, and the convergent thinking guidelines. guidelines. So we try to we make it clear what clear type what of thinking we're doing so people, people understand that they could be a little wild, wild and crazy, crazy with their ideas. ideas. Or now we, now have, we have options on our table, on our table. Let's, let's begin to focus, to focus and start to look at what's good or useful with the concepts, concepts first, first before we look at what might be wrong with them. Well, I think I think that's really useful. I can see where a visual on that would be uh, would be helpful in, in guiding the students into what, the way they're supposed to be acting. Yes, you know, and, so, and if you don't expand enough, enough, you don't hit you the don't discovery, discovery zones. zones. And, and it's interesting. It's interesting. Sometimes, Sometimes people think that, that you know they, they get five, ten options on the table. table. They've, done they've done some brainstorming, some brainstorming. and yeah. the, research the research typically, typically shows, shows you need to go much deeper, much deeper than, that. than that. Right. Ready for the next slide? Uh, uh, one, one more point I wanted to make on that last one, one. because, because uh, there's uh, been, uh, a been a lot of bashing around brainstorming. It's not very effective, and that's absolutely true. But when you look, so when at, the you look research, at the research, it's been around, it's been around for over 15 over years. years. There's been over 100, over 100 PhD level research, level research studies done on it. And half and of the half studies say it's effective, effective, and the other half say it's not. not. So, so more recently, recently researchers come out looking at those studies, trying to figure out, well, what's, the, what's going on here? Why is it contradictory? And those groups that were trained in applying the guidelines for effective brainstorming were far outperforming the other groups in new and useful options. And when groups, well, groups weren't, weren't applying the four guidelines, guidelines, they were not, they were not nearly, nearly as effective. effective. They're actually, actually more effective, effective generating, generating ideas, ideas by themselves. themselves. So the quick so question you could ask yourself right now is, do you know the four guidelines for effective brainstorming? Uh, that's so true that so many in, the, in education, we try and compare things, and we compare it in a name, such as brainstorming, and really don't look at are, are the underlying practices in doing that, such as brainstorming, consistent between those different uh, um, applications? The, uh, yeah. the slide's not the slide's coming, slide's through, coming real through real nice, but, but yeah, you, know, you have yeah, those you have essential, essential components of creativity. creativity. Down, the, Down bottom the bottom was that diamond, diamond the heartbeat. heartbeat. 
but there are but things that drive those two things. things. It's, it's that, that mindset, mindset, the skill set, and tool set. set. And there is a, a whole bunch, bunch of research out there that identify the core mindset for creativity and some skills and some tools. Uh, for example, uh, for on the example, tool, on set tool set side, if, if you were to go to, to mindtools.com, there's, there's a large collection of tools, of tools some, some designed, designed to help you expand, expand your, your thinking, thinking and some, some designed to help focus, to help focus your thinking. thinking. Now, many now, many of these are very, very easy, easy to, to incorporate into your, your, your curriculum. Your curriculum. Have, have you got some of those, um, I mentioned on your website you had some of those tools. Um, do you have some of those um, links listed for people? I can pull that slide up again at the end of the uh, webinar. The, I'll put the Mind the Tools, tools website, website and a few other websites, websites up. up. There are a there few are resources, there. resources there. And if people and want to people comment want to on what they'd, what they'd like to see, see I could try to add some more things. things. On the mindset, on the mindset I, was I was just going to mention, mention uh, four of the, four mindsets, the mindsets that I think, that I think are critical that really kind of align with your five elements. elements. The, mindset the mindset of, uh, of uh, believing, believing, believing that believing there's, there's better, better options, options and, and your abilities, abilities. Being, being curious, curious being courageous, being courageous and, being and being tenacious. tenacious. That's that that's perseverance that's needed. And, and throughout all of the, these actions across all of the elements, there's a lot of overlap. Uh, and how these aren't separate practices, but you're you're really developing a, a lot of those same kinds of skills. You talk about that resiliency uh, piece. Um, the uh, you want to move to some of the uh, uh, best practices. Yes, I think yes. this uh, briefly provides uh, some uh, kind of theoretical view of the way that your thinking has guided your decisions in the classroom, and uh, maybe you can share a little bit of some of the. Um, ways that you've tried to incorporate that specifically with the students in their work. So looking so at all the, all the strategies and the concepts and those, those, frameworks, those frameworks and our, how do I bring it into the classroom, it kind of, it kind of separated, separated itself into two methods. methods. You, have you have a very explicit very direct method, method focusing on creativity, creativity. and, the, and the, another, another set, set in the yellow, yellow there that's there much more integrated, integrated where you can embed it into, into existing, existing curriculum. curriculum. And I think and I sometimes, think sometimes uh, creativity, creativity is considered, considered a yes, a yes uh, but, but we have all this other stuff. stuff. But, you, but you, you don't have, don't to, have do to do it separately. You can very easily, easily do it integrated into the, into the curriculum. curriculum. And, it, and I think it enhances, it enhances the engagement of the students, students when, you when you incorporate strategies, strategies to bring out the bring creativity. Out the uh, yeah. On the on white the side, white side the direct, direct teaching, teaching directly, directly, for directly for creativity. Just wanted to, wanted to mention a couple, a couple things, things here. here. That being that creative, creative is, is a really, a really important, important one, and there's some, there's some limiting beliefs out there around creativity, creativity that I think are a great starting start point, point to talk directly to students about. about. There's, there's a, 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 if you slide, slide over to another slide, slide there's a, a, research a research study done by Adobe. They studied 5,000 people around the world a thousand, a thousand five, five different countries. countries. One of the questions that I ask is, do you consider yourself consider creative? creative? As you notice, As you notice by this by chart, chart here, here, only 52% of the people of the United States, States believe, that believe, that believe that they are creative. creative. Which, is Which is horrible, horrible when, you when you consider that, that the belief that you're creative, that creative is a huge stepping, stepping stone, stone to coming up with creative options for yourself. So a great starting point in the classroom is, all right, how do I help build the creative confidence of my students? And one of the strategies is just shifting our, our thinking around what do we mean by creative. Because something could be creative for the individual, be creative for the group, the organization, or the community at large. And if we're always viewing creativity as this big creativity, then we are going to have this belief that we aren't creative. But if we start to take notice of all those clever moments that we have on a daily basis, then we start to build that creative confidence. And then start and then to start encourage, encourage it and recognize it in the classroom, classroom those moments, moments when, the, when they're having the original, original thoughts of adding value to the discussion. I think that looking at this chart, uh, Corey, it reminds me a little bit of the, the analogy of the glass is half full or half empty. Um, we, uh, you say, wow, we should have a lot more than 50% of our um, people believing that they're creative, and uh, yet uh, we're better than many other countries in the world. It reminds me in some of the international work that um, I've done that uh, 
uh, so many uh, foreign educators and coming to the United States and saying, oh, we want to try and incorporate the, the practices you do to uh, develop creative thinking. And uh, I think in many ways we haven't had that as a deliberate objective within our curriculum. It's just good teachers do some of that. But I think there's just so much, uh, while we can take pride that we're better than many, we still have got a long ways to go. And, and perhaps more recently with so much of the focus on um, the curriculum and testing, I think we've moved away from, from uh, emphasizing that aspect of creativity. Yeah, so finding opportunities for them to start to build their confidence. If you want to slide back to the uh, other slide. I mentioned the tool sets. The skill sets, there's four common ones when we talk about creativity. Fluency, the ability to generate lots of options. It's a different types of options. Originality, coming up with unique ideas that not too many people can think of. And elaboration, which is often forgotten about, refining ideas and enhancing them. And those four skills can be really easily integrated into uh, lessons. And then there's, you know, full-blown credit problem-solving processes, and I'll, I'll share a couple of those in a minute. I did Were you going to share about the, the design thinking uh, process? Yeah. If you want to flip a couple slides forward, we can share that. One more. Or go ahead, one more slide. Oh, keep going. Here we go. So... There are there methods are out there that are designed, that are designed to, help to help people and people teams come up with creative, creative solutions, solutions for challenges. challenges. This one this here one that you're here looking, that you're at, looking at, at is a creative problem solving process, process that's been being developed for over 50 years, years and applied in both school settings, settings and in, and in industry. industry. And it incorporates, and it incorporates a framework, framework thinking, thinking tools, tools and principles that really bring out new and useful thinking. And more and recently, more recently uh, there's been a lot of momentum around, around a process called design, design thinking, thinking that does similar work around helping teams, teams collaborate in a way that's going to develop creative options. options. And, there's, and there's, if you take, if you take both, both of these, these into the Internet, internet you, you find a lot of resources on them. I, I had a chance to experience, uh, as we talked about that, experience this recently, and, and um, the tightness of that process really stimulated a lot more brainstorming. And what we often pass as brainstorming uh, is not very deep and, and or broad, depending on how you want to categorize it. And uh, it just pointed out to me about how we really need to make sure we've got um, clear processes to generate a lot of ideas and, and push ourselves to move beyond our traditional thinking. And with problem solving, with problem solving and we're asking, asking our students, students to do a lot more collaboration. collaboration. And problem, yeah, problem solving can be very, very messy, messy, and we find that find people, people have natural have preferences, preferences within problem, problem solving. Some so people are people clear are ideators, ideators, or other people, other people are implementers. Are implementers. Let's, let's, let's get down with it. Let's do it. So having so a having framework a starts to allow you to communicate a little easier and not get lost in the problem. You can communicate, all right, right now we're clarifying the challenge. And you can see with this model, there's all shaped in diamonds. That represents, that represents that heartbeat, that expanding, that expanding our thinking and focusing, and focusing searching for searching novel options, options that are going to make a difference all the way through, the, way through the process, not just, not just in the generation, generation phase, phase, but also, but also when we're, we're developing, developing the idea or even putting together an action plan action that's going to help us implement it, we want to push, push for new and useful new insights that are going to make it work make better. better. Great. Um, I moved you ahead from uh, the slides you wanted to, to uh, talk about. You want to go back to one of those? Yeah, I did have an interesting story on this. Uh, I want to finish up with this slide, 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 this slide yeah, I was going to share. If you go back go to this, back one. this one. So I teach a, uh, I created a grant where I take students off site for three days for a creative leadership conference. They basically learn this model over two days, and then the third day they work with real clients, and they lead the client through a half a day creative problem solving session. The clients focus on the process, and they help the client think. And I did a follow-up follow impact study, study, and one of the and students, one of the students went, went out to Niagara, Niagara University, University, and I was asking him how he might have been incorporating some of the things, things he had learned. And he said, and he that, said he that he had applied this process, process to uh, the challenge, the challenge of community service hours. hours. And he led his he led team, his, team his, dorm his dorm, through uh, this uh, process, and they ended up breaking the school record for community service hours. 
they generate lots of different options and they implemented them. And, uh, so that was a really nice story that I could add to my collection. That's a great example. And what you were talking about, I mean, that's, that is excellent to have the, the, the students with these skills be facilitators of business groups to do some of that problem solving. You can't get any more relevant than that. The students must really enjoy that experience. There's a, a uh, five-minute five video, video that kind of highlights, highlights that conference, conference and some of the work we're doing on the Creative, on the Creative Leadership, Leadership America, America site. site. And we'll provide a link, we'll a link for, that. for that. Excellent. Excellent. Um, if you want to back up one, one slide, slide, there's a point there's that a point I'd love to love make to before, before we kind of uh, uh, run, run out of time, time here. here. You know, that, yeah, that early model, model I talked about with creativity, creativity, it brought, brought in the evaluation, evaluation piece. And so, so often we forget all about evaluation, evaluation and it's all it's about all generating about ideas. ideas. And creativity, creativity is, is so much so about much judgment about that it's, 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 it's surprising, surprising we overlook it. it. You know, imagine, imagine that you're that walking, walking down, down the hallway of school and you're eating a candy bar and the candy bar starts melting in your hand. What type of reaction would that create? Most of us Most might have some choice words. words. We head right to the bathroom. And then we, and then we, we think and judge it a little bit differently, differently, and we open, we open up, up the possibilities. possibilities. Going back we'll to that question, question, what might what be good or useful, useful about it? About this incident, incident actually, actually happened to a gentleman, gentleman working for Raytheon, Raytheon Corporation. Corporation. And at the time, he was, time he was walking by radars. And because he was brilliant enough to ask, you know, what's going on, what might be good about this, he recognized that these heat waves were coming off the radars, and he was quickly on the path to inventing the microwave oven. And these opportunities happen all the time. As the picture shows, the pops that came about along those same lines, looking at what's right or useful with the, with the situation or the ideas. So I really just wanted to emphasize when we're working with our students, it's very important that we also teach them how we look at our options on the table because creativity is going to have a really unusual novel effect to it. And if we're not looking at novelty in the right way, we're going to stop it out. Well, I, I think that's right. You know, so much of the discussion in, within the, the core standards, now we're talking about higher level thinking skills, and um, we, we fall into the routine that higher level thinking skills is just giving students more complex problem that they got to do multiple steps to get to the answer but but really it's about thinking differently in this aspect of uh, of reflection and evaluation opening up your thinking thinking positively what's what's good about what I've done uh, and useful uh, rather than just saying oh gee I got the wrong answer and, and, and give up or um, um, really not uh, persist in what they're doing so uh, I think some of this is really powerful. It reflects on what we need to do for students if we expect to get them at, at higher levels of learning. The, uh, yeah. the, slide, the slide with the chart, chart on it and the, the, the lines, the lines curving, curving, that might be worth sharing, sharing, sharing kind of ties into what, what, what you were talking about. about. Uh, last one or this one? Uh, one, uh, more. one more. Uh, you want to yeah, click, it click it once? once. So, so right, now, right now, what I see, what I see and I'd be interested to know, know uh, what, the what the perceptions are, are but there's, when we talk about, we talk creativity, about creativity in the classroom right now, right now there's, there's a lot of push, push for open-ended open assignments, project-based project assignments. Based assignments. And, the and the research shows, shows yes, those, those are great at certain developing develop creativity. But what tends to happen is there's some floundering going on by the students, and they're not always coming up with real creative options at the end. Because we're leaving them hanging a little bit at the beginning with the right skills to come up with those creative solutions. If you hit the line again, you want to hit enter one more time? So one way to look at it, this chart is you know, instruction time. Early on, if we spend a little bit of time directly teaching some thinking around creativity, that mindset, some of the skills, and some tools to help us expand thinking and focus thinking, we can really, we really increase, the increase the output, output of creative output solutions on the end, so they're not, they're not at a loss, loss for coming up with some original options. options. And once and we do this, do this early on, on, then we can then paper we can that, that off and not spend so much time, time on that, and we, on that. That. we can focus all on, on the project and the content, content area. area. And, if and if you hit enter one more time, we would send a lot more time integrating these creativity skills right into the curriculum.
So there'll be so a big payoff. Pay we spend a little we'll price, price up front working, working with this, this, a lot less time ongoing, going, letting, letting them work with it, work practice it, practice develop their skills. That really makes a lot of sense. Um, and um, giving students, I, I like this notion of the mindset, skill set, and tool set that if we provide students some direct instruction in that, and then the 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 next projects and work that that the students are doing, um, they can apply some of those um, uh, school skills, uh, and as long as the teacher is continuing to uh, support them and and encourage that kind of open-ended thinking and uh, taking some risks in what they're doing. What are the questions, questions from the audience? From the audience? Yeah, Gretchen, any questions? Um, we we don't have any questions. Okay, one one question I've got, Corey. Uh, what have you seen in terms of as you've tried to incorporate more of this um, in your teaching? How has this affected uh, student engagement and and student achievement? What differences have you seen in students when you've tried to incorporate this? The great thing about creativity is it, it tends to be a fun topic, and everybody loves the aha moment. So they like it when you try to integrate creativity into it. Sometimes, Sometimes it can be, be just something, something small. small. At the end of a and test, they have to come, have to come up, up with what they, what, they, uh, what was good or useful, or useful about the unit, about the unit. Kind of working yeah, on that affirmative that judgment, judgment piece. piece. Or, or at the end of the, the, end on the, the test, test, they might come up with the five original five questions about, about the unit no one else might think of. So those are the small little twists you could add into things, add to it. But on the front end, just you're, you're, you're leaving, leaving some room, some room open, open to, uh, to, uh, to have some, they have some fun, fun with their ideas. ideas. What's the, the rubric? I have a rubric, rubric here I could talk people through, through that might play into this. this. Can you slide Can you to that slide? That's the assessment one? Yes. yes. You know, I was, you know, I was working with some third graders. And it's important, it important to me that they understood what we're talking about, about, about creativity, because we needed a creative, creative solution, solution for the project, project they're working, they're working on. on. And, and I, I, invited I invited them to, uh, uh, their assignment was to go home, look through look a magazine, and find five, five, five items, that they, they items that they found creative and five items, items that they didn't consider creative. creative. They brought them in and had them all throw them on the table so they got mixed together. And then they had to pull out an item on the table that wasn't theirs that they found creative. And I wanted yeah, them to see if they had all select the same items. items. And for the most, the most part, they, part do, they do, but you know, creativity is a very subjective phenomenon. Phenomena. So, so some people some might deem one thing creative where somebody else, else doesn't. doesn't. But there are, but there are common, common elements, elements to what we deem creative. creative. For the person who's looking at it or considering it, it needs to be new to them in some way. And it has to have some value or meaning to them in some way. If one of those things are missing, we tend not to call it creative. So working, so working with the third, with the third graders, graders, that's what we started to process, process through. Why did you pick what you did? What made it creative? And what it boiled down to for them was, well, it was, well, it was different, different and it was and cool. It was cool. So, that so that was their definition of creativity, which I love. Too. When something's, something's different, different and cool, cool it's, creative. it's creative. Interesting. Interesting. But on the assessment, on the assessment side, side, it makes it very tricky, tricky to uh, start, start assessing, assessing creativity. creativity. Because it's so subjective, subjective, if you don't really know, don't who, really the know who the target audience is for that product, product and solution, solution, then it's hard to kind of critique, critique whether, it's whether it's creative. You have a, you have a, a third year designed design something, something for another third, third grader, grader, and you're, and you're uh, a 30-something looking at it, it might not be creative to you whatsoever, but that third grader that sees it the next day is that you're laughing and loves it. And we scored that not creative, creative, we would be really, really limiting the, the potential of our students. So we have to be yeah, really careful when we're assessing, assessing student creativity. creativity. I, prefer I prefer to look, look at, at more of the behaviors, more the behaviors that, lead that lead to creativity, creativity and, kind, and of kind of do some do grading some or rubrics, or rubrics around, that. around that. What we're looking we'll at, look this at this screen is a rubric, is a rubric where a student where a can student self assess themselves on a project, even before they turn it in. Uh, the, first the first item on, on the top, top. My, effort my effort to find or take different perspectives towards this was, was. If, we if we want someone to come up with some original thinking, thinking they got to get past their own original, their own perspective, their own perspective and look at it from somebody else's, else's point of view. Point. So this so is this kind of like almost like a checklist for them. You know, did I look at this from somebody else's perspective? Did I consider many options? 
Did I get some I get unique, some unusual, unusual options, options on the table? On the table? So this so is a this way is for them to start to reflect, reflect on their habits. habits. And, and they can they score can their, their own, own creativity. creativity. And this gets uh, to the, evalu the evaluation element that you talked about in the beginning and how important that is. Yes. yes. And, I and I think it's important, important for them, them to, uh, to uh, reflect on their creativity. And, and did they find it original in some way? Was it useful or valuable? Did it help them solve their challenge or did it meet the requirements? And it was still original. And, and, you know, did they pay they attention to the detail, detail and elegance? elegance. That, last that last one, one isn't talked, isn't talked about, about much, but there's some there's research around products, products and what we've deemed deem creative. creative. And there's and this there's whole, whole elegant, elegant uh, design uh, well, well fit, fit notion, notion of, of creativity, creativity that, that often, often gets left out. Good. Good. And I find this really helpful. With student projects, I'll often... Early on, I'll have them do one without seeing this, and I'll have them do one again, something similar with it, so I can see the kind of difference. And then they get accustomed to kind of using this chart, and eventually they won't really need the rubric anymore because they'll make these habits. Yeah, and this gets them reflecting about their own work rather than just waiting to see what the grade is from the, the teacher. Um, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Corey, let me go back to uh, the slide uh, with your uh, uh, contact information for people that want to follow up uh, with you um, that I've got your email address um, up here and uh, the uh, uh, links that you have on the Creative Leadership America. So uh, uh, I know you put some of those resources up there for some of the people that want to specifically uh, follow up with you uh, in that regard. Um, we've got just a few minutes left. I've got one more poll question that I want to uh, ask the group um, and make the connection to the um, surveys that we have for teachers to reflect on their their practices uh, in each of these within the career model. You get to my uh, last slide here. In addition to creating the model as part of the work of the Technical Assistance Center, we've created these reflection teacher reflection surveys. It's not an evaluation. Uh, it really is for teachers like you'd read a magazine and say, let me think about uh, my personal characteristics and see what I want to do with that. So teachers can think about their um, um, uh, teaching strategies related to creativity and innovation around those five actions. Um, give yourself a, um, a grade and then listen to some suggestions. And the report that comes out after you complete the survey um, then uh, gives you some suggestions. This is totally anonymous, um, although I have talked to some teachers that have talked about using this as their professional portfolio as part of their uh, annual performance review, that that could be an activity that if you were focusing on this creativity and you want to do a before and after uh, rating as to some of the practices in your classroom, uh, it could be used at that. I mentioned some of the instructional resources on the website. We've got a number of books, magazine articles, blogs, videos uh, for you to think about your own development or share with your colleagues around these uh, aspects, including the creativity and innovation. And uh, be sh uh, adding some of those uh, from uh, Corey uh, to this site. Uh, and I mentioned the Twitter feed is a way that we'll uh, continue to add to those. The surveys are on the New York State Technical Assistance uh, Center website. Um, and those teachers uh, in New York ha have free access uh, to that. Uh, but we're also going to uh, take this national with our Career Readiness uh, Institute that we're developing under the Successful Practices Network. And so those of you that are outside of New York, uh, um, here's the link to uh, take a look at those. Um, and these will be part of the resources that we have as part of that national network of schools that we're developing over the next several months. We have uh, um, three more uh, webinars in this series on the last three elements, uh, engagement, empowerment, and uh, work habits and collaboration. So I encourage those of you who are interested to tune in for those uh, last three webinars. And uh, one poll question. If we've got a couple minutes left, uh, Gretchen, if you would put the poll question up about what else would you uh, like to have to learn more about the career models. The webinars are one tool that we're using to to get the word out. Um, Dick, unfortunately, the poll is not launching, so we're going to have to move on. <laughs> we will skip that then. 
So uh, your internet balky again this afternoon? It sure is. Um, just as a way to wrap up, um, the surveys can be used a, a number of different ways. The, for personal reflection and what you want to uh, improve, it can be a pre-activity for a professional development workshop. Any one of the elements that you're going to have a conversation about, have teachers do the survey, it really engages them thinking about their practices, and then come together to share what's working, uh, what are some of the challenges, uh, what they might try uh, and, and work on. Um, it could be an agenda for a conversation within your professional learning communities. If you're trying to identify practices to enhance student learning, uh, doing the surveys jointly as a team uh, could really stimulate a great conversation. And as I mentioned before, it can become an artifact for your uh, professional portfolio uh, and uh, evaluation. We're going to continue uh, to develop this and some resources. Um, I, one suggestion is uh, pulling together some of the assessment tools that relate to each of these. Uh, Corey had a great example here in creativity. I think there's a lot of uh, needs out there in that regard and uh, also working on a longer paper uh, which would describe uh, the model. So I want to thank those of you that uh, tuned in today and particularly thank Corey for taking the time at the end of a work day to uh, pull together some ideas. This was some preparation, one more lesson plan uh, for you and, and sharing some of the ideas that you've been able to in incorporate in this uh, introduction of uh, career practices uh, into your instruction. So, so Corey, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're Thanks welcome. for having me. Thanks and I did want to I mention, want to mention uh, uh, I have created a... a a creativity unit that's designed to be integrated into existing uh, curriculum. And if anyone would like a sample uh, lesson within that, that website, uh, we'll provide some more information on that. Great, great. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we'll end the webinar now, uh, Gretchen. And uh, thanks again, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thanks, Corey. Thank you.